What's up guys, Bill here from Evil Olive. Uh, we've finally gotten out of our post-haunt hibernation. In the shop here for a couple of weeks now, uh, starting to tinker for uh, next year, so I thought I'd show you what we uh, got going on. You saw these guys hanging out at Home Depot, almost 40 bucks in October and September, I should say. Uh, it's got a little motor in the mouth, the mouth opens and closes, it's got a little speaker in it, he says some corny jokes, the eyes light up. I didn't think too much of it. So, uh, October was over with, I ended up going on clearance uh, down to about $7 a piece. So needless to say, I bought about nine of them and uh, got these two done. Started doing a couple different things with. I'll show you what I did a little closer up. Most importantly is I underestimated what was inside these things. I'm gonna pull the head apart for you on this one and uh, show you what's involved inside there and what we're gonna do with it. Also, potentiometers and their potential. Um, love these things. I'm going to show you how we're using it with these. They're very, very handy to have around. So um, stick around. We'll go through some things and uh, welcome to the olive jar. All right guys, so I uh, already got the screws in the back of the skull here loosened. So first thing I'd like to point out that uh, they come with this little demo button for in the package you can push it to get a little preview of what the thing does. These come in handy for testing things. It's got a nice little plug on it. You could even take the plug off, split the wires and you've got a little trigger. Um, you know, for if you're splicing something together and need to see if it works or not, I always keep these around. I've already got nine of them, so. First bonus, uh, secondly, you take a look, there are screws all over the place in here. Um, it's amazing how many tiny screws they used to put this thing together. You'd think they would just mold it out of one solid piece, but it's actually quite a few pieces um, that they actually put together here. So I'm rather impressed with the quality of it. Um, so what we're gonna do is pull, pull that apart. Now you can see in here, that's our little board. So that's got the little program stored on it to make the mouth move and all that. And um, it does also come with uh, three AA batteries for everyone who likes to collect batteries. You never have enough of those laying around. But got a little speaker in there. It's nothing that impressive, but I save it just for, if I ever have to do something like this, it, you know, it's kind of handy, you don't have to buy it. Um, so I pretty much scrapped everything in the back half of the skull here, uh, except from the speaker uh, and the batteries, of course. But the little board, all the wires, I just cut them. So this part can come completely out. And right in here is our motor. All it's gonna do is move uh, this guy here, which has a retention spring on it, which actuates this little armature that they got going to the lower jaw. It pushes it down and then the spring pushes it back. The motors in here are three and a half volts, which is kind of tricky for a power supply. Most people just get nine or 12 volt power supplies. So what I ended up doing was going online and getting some of these, and this is a potentiometer. Uh, what this is, you got your power and ground coming in, and then you got power and ground going out to your motor. And what it is, is this little knob here goes from 0% up to 100% of uh, power. So if you got 12 volts hooked up to this at 50%, it would be sending six volts out to whatever. So in an instance where we have a three and a half volt motor, we can put this to about 25% and put out about three and a half volts or so. Any kind of power supply going to any motor, especially when you're jerry-rigging something like we're gonna do here, um, just for the fact you don't have to have specific power supplies. If you have enough of these, as long as you pay attention to what current you got coming out, you should be good. One more thing before I forget again, if you're like me and you wanna get something that looks really good and not have to pay a lot for it, the way this skull holds onto the spine here, it's, it's got a little dowel and that dowel goes through a hole in the spine. Uh, I'm going to do this eventually as soon as I get some time, but if you grind these off, the skull does ride on two lips on the spinal column here. So what we're going to be able to do, grind that off, is have a skull that can turn. Simple linkage going from the, the lower jaw motor to say the collarbone, whenever the jaw drops, that's going to make the head want to turn. So you could get a, uh, a turning skull pretty easily out of this, this setup here. And also all the joints in here, 
are all ball and socket joints, believe it or not, they're just screwed together. If you have one of these and you take it apart enough, you'll notice that the hands at the top, the right hand is on the left wrist and vice versa, which when it's up like this, you couldn't tell, but when you take it apart to drop the arms down, it's pretty obvious, but I was able to pull it apart and turn them around, interchange the left to the right and get it to a uh, look normal because on the back here it's got all these screw holes obviously but on the front it's it's nice and smooth so so what I'm going to do really quick is just show you this was our potentiometer um, on the back it does show you where your power comes in power comes in and goes out to the motor so I put these little pigtails on here with these CCTV uh, terminals um, they got the uh, little terminal screws on it, so it's really good for mocking stuff up. Nothing permanent. You can pull it out real quick if you need to. 12 volt, 2 amp power supply. Voltmeter on. Get this up so you guys can see it. So I got 12 volts going in, and I'm going to put my leads on my out terminals. So all the way counterclockwise, um, which would be almost 12 o'clock, which should be about off, we're getting 2.3 volts. Um, we go to about 3 o'clock, we're getting 3.5, 6 o'clock is about 7, and if we go all the way around, almost back to 12, we're at 12 volts, obviously. So, um, we're going to set this, because our motors, um, which it does, it'll say on just about any motor that you find, if you're pulling something apart, it'll say what voltage it's rated at. Uh, these are 3.5 volt motors, so I'm going to get this to about 3, 3.5, about 3.3 volts, which is almost 3 o'clock on that on the dial. Ideally I'm going to have a uh, Arduino board um, hooked up to this and that will control it. Uh, this will only allow so much voltage to go through whether it be a 12 volt or a 9 volt power supply I have put up. I'll have to tweak this to match it. But um, then this will allow for the correct voltage to go through. So on the motors inside the skull I put a couple of leads. I put some speaker wire just because it's a little more uh, durable than this super tiny wire that they put in there. So this just plugs right in. Super easy. Now whenever I hit this, it's going to go through the potentiometer. It's going to turn that 12 volts down to 3.5 and it will drop the mouth. Just like that. So when I have it hooked up to my board, whatever sequence I have, I'll have to, you know, take into account that the spring on it's going to bring it back. So if I'm syncing it up to a voice, it'll take a little bit of time to program it all. But, um, you know, if it's just a scream or just a pop scare for a bunch of mouths to drop at once, that's all we need. Do the same on this one. And that one drops. So, pretty cool effect for, you know, a $7 prop, essentially. Um, if you're wondering, this, this one here I wrapped with a uh, uh, plastic wrap and then hit it with a heat gun. Uh, I did a couple different layers and then I went through and airbrushed the colors on. I did a little more detail around the, the lips and that. This one was supposed to be kind of a, a smoky, slow-cooked corpse, and this one was to be kind of a charred, gooey, nasty, down-to-the-bone, uh, wet corpse. So, And this one was just uh, silicone caulk and paper towels, um, and then painted and went over with a gloss finish. I want to say these were like two bucks a piece um, on eBay. Um, and they do have some where they have a remote knob, so the knob has a little pigtail on it, just like our little trigger here. So you can plug it in, you could extend the leads if you need to. Um, so that will work good um, for our prop boxes where if we have to change something kind of on the fly, I'm going to use those so I don't have to dig in there and fight through the wires because usually it gets pretty tight in there by the time it's all said and done. If you're into building props or just taking stuff apart and changing it, I would recommend getting a couple of these just because you don't have to have specific power supplies for them. Um, like these, if we were to put 12 volts to it, it probably would work, but not for long. So, you know, you always want to make sure you're putting the correct voltage through. But uh, that's all for this time. Like our channel, uh, follow us on Facebook at Evil Olive Productions. Uh, if you want to see more of what we do at our haunt, uh, the haunt page is Malice Haunted Attraction, M-A-L-I-C-E. I will put a link in the description. Uh, thanks for thinking inside the jar.